Hello friends, in this video now I am going to take some basics in molecular biology uh, that is basically about DNA, RNA and the bonds also here. So, let us get started. Nucleic acid, there are two types of nucleic acid that is DNA and RNA. Nucleic acid is a polymer of nucleotides. We have done the detail of nucleotides in the previous video. Now see, DNA, DNA is double stranded, RNA is single stranded. DNA has four nitrogenous bases ATCG. But RNA has AUCG, DNA has deoxyribose and RNA has ribose. So, this difference you know, a question was asked in PT entrance exam in AIMS exam. Question was, what is the main difference between DNA and RNA? Main difference between DNA and RNA is, I am just giving you two options, sugar or nitrogenous base. So, tell me what will be the answer? Sugar or nitrogenous base? Answer is sugar because nitrogenous base ACG, ACG same, only T and U differ, right? But sugar is always deoxyribose in DNA, always ribose in RNA. So, main difference is of sugar, right? Now, let us see the detail of DNA. DNA is double stranded in prokaryotes or eukaryotes? DNA is double stranded in both. Prokaryotes also, eukaryotes also, just that it is circular double stranded in prokaryotes, but it is linear double stranded in eukaryotes. And DNA is helical and it is right handed. Most of the helical structures in our body are right handed. Then the two strands are anti parallel. The two strands of DNA are anti parallel. What that means that let us say these are two strands. This is 5 dash here, this is 3 dash here other is 3 here and 5 here. So, direction is always from 5 to 3. So, upper strand is going towards right side, lower strand is going towards left side. This full thing in one word is known as anti-parallel, right? Let us see Chagas rule. This is very easy, you know the basic. A and T, they join with each other. So, A will always be equal to T and then G is equal to C because G will bind with C. There is double bonding between A and T. And there is triple bonding between G and C. All these are hydrogen bonds. So, we can say that A plus G is equal to T plus C. That is, number of purines are equal to number of pyrimidines, right? Now, let us do the types of DNA. Types of DNA. Main is B DNA. But we are also going to do A and Z. Z means zigzag backbone is there. That is why it is given alphabet Z. B is the most common type. And A is present in RNA DNA duplex. So, let us see, base pair per turn are here 10 base pair per turn, here 11 and here 12 base pair per turn. Both B and A DNA are right handed, but this Z DNA is left handed. Then this B DNA is found in low salt concentrations and in hydrated environment, but A DNA is present in high salt concentrations and it is present in dehydrated environment and then this Z DNA is present when purines alternate with pyrimidines in area where purines alternate with pyrimidine in that area Z DNA is present it is present in those areas which are responsible in the regulation of gene expression gene expression means work of gene that gene gets expressed itself in the formation of mRNA and then protein and then protein has to do all the work in the cell. Now, regulation of gene expression means the control of gene expression, the control of all this activation or inhibition of gene. So, this thing is all and under control, right? And those areas where uh, the DNA is responsible for regulation of gene expression, mostly in those areas, this Z DNA form is present, right? And B DNA's form is most stable form of DNA. And A DNA is present when RNA DNA, RNA DNA duplex is formed, right? Now, what is a nucleosome? In a simple mathematical equation, I can say nucleosome is equal to DNA plus protein. Which protein? Histone proteins. Histone proteins are rich in basic amino acids and basic amino acids have positive charge. So, I will say histone protein is positively charged, right? Now, DNA, DNA has lots of phosphates and because of that, DNA has negative charge. Direct question can also be asked on charges, right? Now, when DNA is negative and histone is positive, 
then they are attracted towards each other and they form tight combination known as nucleosome right so see here when this dna is bound to protein dna is bound to protein then this dna is not free this dna is not free it uh, transcription cannot occur on this dna this is tightly bound with histone proteins right so when this dna is not free then right now this gene is inactive this dna which is bound to histone there the gene is inactive right and sometimes for this euchromatin and heterochromatin words are used euchromatin and heterochromatin euchromatin is the dna which is loose loose dna so here the genes are active in this area but heterochromatin means the tightly packed dna with histones the dna is tightly packed and here the genes are inactive now see the next topic that is ptms of histones ptm of histone stands for post translational modifications see histone is a protein formed by translation but after translation post translational modifications are done and all these modifications of histones help in regulation of gene expression that is histone modification can lead to activation or inactivation of the gene and let's see the various ways of histone modification are acetylation phosphorylation methylation adp ribosylation monoubiquitylation and sumoylation these six you have to cram but first two i will be explaining that is acetylation and phosphorylation of histone acetylation means adding this acetyl group on histone phosphorylation means adding this group on histone basically what charge we are adding on histone we are adding negative charge on histone when we are doing acetylation or phosphorylation and dna is also negative charge now in this situation when histone is also negative dna is negative so they will repel each other and this dna is now free earlier this dna was bound to histones but now this dna is free transcription and translation can occur on this dna can i say this leads to gene activation so can i say that acetylation and phosphorylation of histones lead to gene activation right or i can say that deacetylation and dephosphorylation of histones will lead to gene inactivation right and now can i say that acetylation and phosphorylation of histone will lead to increase euchromatin formation means genes will be active right euchromatin means active genes okay now let's see what are the bonds in dna very very important thing bonds in dna let's say this is the backbone this is one strand and this is another strand the backbone is made up of sugar and phosphate so sugar phosphate backbone like this sugar phosphate alternate sugar phosphate backbone is there now nitrogenous base is attached to sugar this way nitrogenous base is attached to sugar here also nitrogenous base attached to sugar now in between two nitrogenous bases we have double or triple bond you know between a and t we have double bond between g and c we have triple bond right now see here this bond is hydrogen bond this bond is hydrogen bond and now this bond between n and s that is nitrogenous base and sugar this bond is called beta n glycosidic bond this beta n glycosidic bond is always with c1 of sugar c1 of sugar will make a bond with n9 of purines n9 of purines and it will make a bond with n1 of pyrimidines so this bond is beta n glycosidic bond and this bond between sugar and phosphate this is 3 dash 5 dash phosphodiester bond 3 dash 5 dash phosphodiester bond and now beta n glycosidic and 3 dash 5 dash phosphodiester bond both are covalent bond covalent means strong bonds so see here see my hands now let's say these are two dna strands they are joined by which bonds here which bonds we have hydrogen bonds which are weak bonds so it is very easy to break all these hydrogen bonds and we can separate the two dna strands which is required in replication required in transcription right but each individual strand is made up of all the strong bonds here so it is very difficult to break this individual strand into pieces right